Hello cable enthusiasts, welcome to another Prismian Fibre Optic how-to video. My name is Sandy Menny and today I'm going to show you some of the features of the Prismian large modular joint, the LMJ, and also how to route fibres and modules through that joint closure. I've got one set up in the workshop so we'll just pop on out there now and I'll run you through those things. I just wanted to show you some more features of the Prismian joints. This particular LMJ has got a mixture of trays. It's got the 24 fiber trays here and some ribbon trays down here. And that is one of the benefits because it's modular, you can actually mix and match different types of trays to suit the different types of applications. Now all the trays actually stay up on their own, which is quite a nice feature. So when you're working on them, it's easy to just push them up and they stay, they stay up like that. So the first thing is that the, the top tray always comes with a cover on it and it's quite easy to remove, but what you need to do is just take something like a small screwdriver and just release the securing tabs in these slots here. There's one and there's the other and it just comes away very easily like that. So in practice, the fibers come up through the glands here and then they route up through these retaining parts here and into the raceways either side. So this part here is a, a manifold that allows you to guide the fibers in different directions. So it's got a plastic cover on it and you release the cover by just flexing the two bits of plastic here at either side and then pushing the tab out with your fingers. And then it comes away. And that reveals then the distribution manifold there are already some retaining clips here as well to retain the fiber modules or tubes in place. Now there's a table in the presentation that, that shows you how many modules or tubes you can put into each clip. But just to show you how to get the clips out, you just release the pressure by pulling on this tab at the side here. And then I just use a pair of pliers just to pull them out. So they actually come out very easily like that and then they slide back in and they're on a ratchet system. Now, if you look, turn them up the other way, you'll notice that there are four holes in here. So we advocate that you always have no more than one hole protruding from the end here. And it's important that when you push these back, that you don't push them back so hard that you actually crush the fiber or the modules that are behind them. But uh, if you follow the table and then have up to one of these holes exposed, then that's fine. Now, this is the area here between this orange clip and this retaining part here, where you need to strip back either the, the loose tube or the module skin. So that this is the breakout area in here. And then from there, depending on where you want to route the fibers, you can either go up the raceway on the right hand side here, or if you need to go up the left hand side raceway, you can take the fiber and go around these donuts. You can go around this way, take an S, and that will then allow you to route the fiber up the left hand raceway. If you needed to take the fiber through to the a side or the B side, sorry, of the uh, closure, you can then go through, there's a hole under here and you're able to take the fiber around the raceway through here and then back through the hole to a similar manifold on the other side. So that's pretty straightforward as well. If you have a flex tube cable, then we're quite happy that you take the flex tube, say from one of these rear ports here and bring the flex tubes all the way up through to these retaining clips here and then strip strip the uh, coating just here. If though you're, you're dealing with a loose tube cable where the tubes are much stiffer, we would suggest that if you had to come from the rear through to this A side here, what we would do is take the, the fibers or the tubes up into a similar sort of breakout system on the other side, strip the, strip the tubes away from the fibers and then use the manifold on the other side to bring the fibers through to this side. It saves congestion in the base area 
of, uh, of the closure. One point that is important while we're talking about the manifold here is that it's really not designed to store excess fiber here. You can, but if you start to fill it up with fiber, then you really restrict your options further down the track of being able to route fiber anywhere around the joint that you may want to. So our strong advice is to actually not store fiber here, but to take any unused fibers up and store them on trays. You know, these are very high capacity joints, so there's plenty of trays normally available to store the fibers. As I mentioned, we use these raceways on the side here to, to guide the fibers up to the trays. And then to bring the fiber onto a particular tray, you come through these guideways here. And the important thing to remember is that there are two hinges here that support the trays. And the fibers need to go behind two little tabs. There are two little tabs just in here that hold the fibers back and away from the hinges. You need to make sure you go behind those tabs and then up onto the tray here where you can store your surplus fiber and then go into the uh, splice protector here. This particular tray here is for 24 splices. And you'll notice down here there are eight tracks to retain the fiber splice protectors. So they stack three deep and there are eight, so that's 24. And this particular size uses the 1.3 by 30 millimeter splice protector.